Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 140. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says a certain number is reduced by 3. A certain number is reduced by 3. We are further told that the result is then divided by 5. The quotient is then increased by 4 and divided by 3. The final result turns out is also 3. The question simply is, if that were the case, what was the original number? One more time, we have a number that we start out with some quantity. We are out to reduce it by 3. So let's call that, let's call that quantity n. If you want to do it on your own first, pause the video right now, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do together. Do you understand? One more time. A certain number is reduced by 3, the result is divided by 5, the quotient is then increased by 4, and divided by 3. The final result is also 3. What was the original number? I'll give you 5 seconds for you to be able, for you to, be able to pause and unpause the video. Well, let's do it together then, okay? Let's call a certain number is reduced by 3. Let's call that certain number. Let's give it a name here. What do you want to call it? I'm just going to call it n. So that's the first sentence. A certain number is reduced by 3. So that we have an n here that we start out with. It is reduced by 3. First step. The result is then divided by 5. The result is then divided by 5. And when you divide a number quantity by another quantity, the final, the net result of the division problem is what is known as the quotient. The quotient, quotient is just a very fancy way of saying the result of a division problem. So when you do, we have a number, we reduce it by 3, we reduce it by 3, we divide by 5. When we do that, we will get the result here. That result is called the quotient. And what are we supposed to do with that quotient? The quotient is then increased by 4. So here we, here we have the quotient, we are going to increase it by 4. The quotient is increased by 4 and divided by 3. So we increase it by 4, now we divide it by 3. And we are told that when we do that, the final result also happens to be Final result also happens to be 3. So this final result also happens to be 3. The question is, what is the value of n? Let's find out, shall we? What's the value of n? What can we do here? We're going to keep it very simple. What did I do here? Okay, let's work on this one here. Uh, we're going to separate this thing. We're going to solve for q. If we solve for q, multiply this side by 3 and multiply that side by 3. Keep the two separate. So that 3 goes away, and we end up with q plus 4, q plus 4 equals 9. If q plus 4 equals 9, that means q must be 5. Put it in here, that's all it is. It's a very simple equation. So n minus 3 over 5 has to equal q, which we just found out is 5. Multiply both sides by 5, so we can get rid of this 5. Multiply this side by 5, n over minus 3. Multiply this side by 5, so we can get rid of this 5 here, which means n minus 3 equals 15. n minus 3 equals 15. If n minus 3 equals 15, n must be 18. n must be 18. That's not the end of it. We need to make sure that our work is correct, which is not because that's not what I have. Oh, 5 times 5 is not 15. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25, which is why we need to verify our work. Tell you what, tell you what, let's, let's make it interesting. Let's make it interesting. Let's pretend that I did not catch, I did not catch this mistake. 5 times 5 is not 15. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 plus 3 should have been 28. Let's pretend that I did not catch my mistake. Let's verify, see what happens here. We're going to verify it over there. Where can we, ver let's verify it here. Let's verify our work here. And of course you will see that when we do the verification it would not work. Let's verify. That's the, that's the whole point of verification, so that we know that the answer that we arrived at is correct. So what we are, what we are claiming is that the quantity that we started out with is 18. If the quantity that we start out with is 18, we are told that is, that number is reduced by 3. So if we start out with 18, if you reduce it by 3, we get 15, and we are told that it is divided by 5. If you divide that by 5, 15 divided by 5 gives us 3. The co this is the quotient, this is the q. The quotient is then increased by 4. So we have a q which is 3, we increase by 4 which gives us 7 and it then is divided by 3. 
and you can clearly see that the net result, the final result, does not equal 3. 7 divided by 3 is not 3. And that tells us that something has gone wrong. That tells us that our answer is not correct, it's not making any sense. And of course what went wrong, we know, obviously we know what went wrong, because 5 times 5 is 25. And therefore this is 28. And now when we plug in 28, it would work. So we put it to 28 here. 28 minus 3 is 25, and 25 divided by 5 is 5, and therefore the Q is going to be 5. Q is going to be 5. This is our Q. The quotient is then increased by 4. The quotient is then increased by 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 is indeed 3. That means our answer is correct. 28 is the correct answer. 18 was not because it was not making any sense. It wasn't working out. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? But that's how you catch your mistake. It's always important that you verify your work. I happened to catch my mistake right away, but had I not caught it, had I not caught the mistake here, I would have realized here that something has gone berserk. And then you go back and redo your work and see which, what went wrong. Do you understand? I know.